Hi guys, Billy back, and this time we are looking at the 1-6 scale scissor hands figure by Art Figures. Now this has to be one of the quickest turnarounds from pre-order to release I have ever experienced with a 1-6 scale figure. I ordered it two months ago and it's now here on my doorstep and I'm just really blown away by that. I really wish that a lot more figure companies did that, you know. We're going to make a batch of this thing, so I tell you what, let's just make the batch. Then once we've got all the pre-orders, We'll see if we can make a second batch, but the first batch, well, pretty much ready to go. And it's quite a refreshing change, especially considering present toys are now doing a 1-6 scale Edward Scissorhands figure as well. And they're definitely not going to be as quick as these guys in getting the figure to us. But when I saw the prototype images for this, I was like, oh, it's a day one pre-order. If they can get close to that prototype, I'm going to lose my mind because it's always been a figure I've wanted in my collection, a 1-6 scale Edward Scissorhands. Hot Toys did one many, many years ago, and I think they had the license for the movie, but they didn't have the license for Johnny Depp's likeness. So instead of just not bothering, they decided to go ahead and release a figure, but it didn't look like Johnny Depp. I think it actually looks a lot more like, I don't know, Matt Smith in cosplay than it actually did Johnny Depp. So Edward Scissorhands was screaming for a reasonably good movie accurate version of him in 1-6 scale. And I always said if anybody was going to make an Edward Scissorhands it would be a day one pre-order for me. I just I wouldn't care less. I need this in my collection. It's one of my favourite films of all time. Absolutely love the soundtrack. I'm a big Danny Elfman fan. I literally went to go meet the man in December when he was doing The Nightmare Before Christmas Live. I thanked him for all his music. I shook the man's hand. I had a photo with him. We got all graphs, the whole shebang, and I had a wonderful time. So getting Tim Burton slash Danny Elfman stuff in my collection is kind of a priority to me. But as it is, let's get on and actually have a look at the figure itself. You can see there is a promo picture on the front here of Edward with his scissors. It's got scissor hands, not Edward. And it's got AF29 down there, which I think is the 29th release from Art Figures. And on the side, we've got a promo picture of Edward with some gears and cogs on the side in a silhouette. Again, the logo. And then on the back, as with all Art Figures boxes, you can see you've got the logo, you've got the Art Figures logo, you've got a QR code, you've got some warnings for choking hazards. And then on the other side, we've got the promo art stretching out onto the side. Got a picture of a butterfly, the scissor hands logo. Nothing at the top, nothing at the bottom. And there is a seal on the side here. So once you open that up, you can see it says void because obviously once this has been opened, they want you to know that somebody's actually had a look in this. Nobody has opened this yet, so this is the first time ever. And it's on a magnetic clasp here. So once we pop it open, and on the inside we've got another promo picture, we've got some foam, and then once we pull this out we can see we've actually got the figure with all the accessories and everything, but there's bits falling out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take all this out of the box and have a good look at what we get. Okay, so I've gotten everything out of the box. We're going to look at the accessories first. You can see we've got this wide belt with lots of studs, some brass, some silver on there, and this sort of moon buckle, which is exactly what the film showed. It also comes with three smaller belts with rivets inside them and just a normal sort of circular buckle, no moon shape on there. He also comes with a whole bunch of these tiny little bits for his hands. Now, I think these, some of these are like thumbs and whatnot, and they're very detailed, but I'm going to have to figure out which one goes on where, because I don't know exactly on which hand each, ones of these go, each one of these goes, but they're all very well made. They're all plastic, not metal. And he also comes with some extra wrist pegs, some extra string, and he also comes with a stand. And I really, really like this stand. It looks gorgeous. It's got scissor hands on the front with the right text. Looks pretty good. Nice metallic shine to it. And then on top, you can see all those cogs that were from the box, all sculpted into the top of the base. Now, this is like a repurposed sort of Age of Ultron base. Like a lot of companies have used this stand after Hot Toys started using it. So this, this is just a simple mold that just keeps getting brought out and repurposed all the time. But it works really well for this. The actual size of it works well. You don't need a lot more for it. And all that sort of cog detail in there suggests that this is Edward Scissorhands when he was in the factory. And it, I just love that little touch, that little bit of nuance. You don't have to do anything to this. You don't have to like 
changed the nameplate because it's got a silly name like Shear Hands or something. It's actually Scissor Hands, and you've actually got some nice cogs and gears and detail in there. So overall, I really, really like that base, the sort of brass dry brushing all over them. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to get this guy fitted up, and we're actually going to take a look at the figure once I've gotten everything on him. Okay, so I finally got him out of the box, and I've put him all together. And yeah, this, I like the aesthetics. There's just a few niggling problems that I have with it, and we'll get into those in a minute. But first of all, let's take a look at the head sculpt, because that thing is really, really good. We're going to come in and I'm going to try and get the details in. I've got to move the hands out of the way because I've already broken one of the scissors and I'll show you in a minute. But look at the details on this thing. Really well painted around the eyes. I, I really thought that was going to like give him like the raccoon eyes and just make it look really sloppy. But he's very nicely painted. Look at all the scars. They've even got the little scar down by his lip here. It's faint but it is there because it's simply sort of like a very whitewashed sort of pale skin like it was in the movie so a lot of the details don't show up straight away but once you start zooming in have a look at the forehead and the cheeks and the blushing around the cheeks you can tell that this is a very nice sculpt stunningly accurate to Johnny Depp from the movie it really is I absolutely love what they've done with the hair here they've actually given him like really thick wiry layers they've actually sculpted it in and you can see all the different layers in there that actually make it work really, really well. I remember when they first did the Hot Toys one, it, he looked like something out of the cure, but not in a good way. Yeah, I like the sort of light dry brushing they've done in their hair. There's sort of like a brown as well as a black in there. And he's got these hazel eyes. I think they're hazel. They look hazel to me. But yeah, that head sculpt is fantastic. One of the only issues I've got is when they fit it onto this body, the neck is a little too long. From what I can recall in the film, I'm pretty sure it came up a bit higher on Louis's sort of chin. You know, it's just a little bit higher, this sort of collar here. But uh, yeah, it, it gives him a bit of a giraffe neck, and I'm not happy about that. Now, you can futz around with it, but if you straighten him up, look how high off the shoulders that is. And then when you bring it down, it folds all this material in. And that's another thing, you've got to futz around with this. I think I'm going to try and do something here because this thing needs to be a bit higher up and it's, it's being blocked down here and I'm not sure if it's been glued in place or whatever. And then coming down into the suit, you can see all those buckles and the stitching around the chest area. He's got sort of different pleather. I, I, I'm not sure if it is pleather. There's some like soft sort of PVC stuff down here. This stuff doesn't feel like pleather. It feels a bit more like a tracksuit. You know, it feels like a shell suit type stuff there. It's all like parachute, you know. But that, that again feels like PVC. It could be pleather, but it feels PVC to me. But look at the details in here. They've actually got the chain up in the shoulder. More buckles, just buckles everywhere you look. And I think this moon belt, I'm not 100% certain. I'm pretty sure it's right, but it might have been a bit more silver. Not entirely sure. We'll have to have a look in the screenshots again. But uh, yeah, maybe this had a little bit of a silver dry brush in there as well, but... It's not a big deal. More buckles, more studs all the way around. This belt was a bit difficult to get on, but I finally got it there. And then coming down, there's something I thought I'd never say, but uh, look at the detail in this crotch. That's a lot of detail in a crotch, isn't it? Look at all these like rivets and more, more buckles and more studs. And then it comes down. You can see they've actually put in real stitching around this part here. That's what that thread, that extra thread is for. If you lose some of that or it comes undone, you can actually go in and put more back in, which is really nice. And even this stud comes around and is attached to the trousers here. And this again feels a bit more parachute-y. This feels like stretched like fabric, like lycra type stuff. So that's really good. And then you get these three buckles here. And these are a pain in the butt to get on. These buckles are far too small, these two especially, for the thickness of the pleather. So trying to feed it in was an absolute nightmare but I assure you it does go in but I was there for about 45 minutes trying to do it slowly but surely I ended up getting some tweezers to do it but then coming down into the feet you can see that he's got the asymmetrical boots on as per usual he's got this cross hatch sort of design on this one but this has lots of sort of like wraps around it would have been nice they're putting all the buckles in and they've actually got all four buckles like they were in the movie just here but it would have been nice if they'd been able to 
make these a little bit more 3D, these finely loose bits of pleather, or leather shall we say, that's supposed to stick out of the boot. They're supposed to be a bit more frayed and stick out more, but they've sculpted them in quite tightly to the boot. Not a big deal, but it is a little bit to say. And they've even sculpted in all the little uh, loops just down in the foot here. And again, look at all this. They've even got it put in the finer details here. They've even got this little nodge on the bottom of his boot there that was actually in the film, which is a really nice touch. Didn't have to do that. They could have just sculpted it in and I probably wouldn't have even noticed or criticised it too much. But look at the details. It is absolutely fantastic. Now coming in, these scissors are an absolute pain in the petunias to go on. The one with the red thread goes in this thumb here from photos I've seen. And the one without the red thread, the small one, goes on this thumb. There's another one here, a big one that goes in and that kind of fits on here somewhere. And then there's another one that fits here and they keep popping out. But this one here, you can see, you can barely see, but it's broken down the bottom. That's going to fall off at some point, so I'm not going to touch that too much. But these do articulate quite a lot and they move up and down and they work really well. And you can see they're all attached to the wrist here. That makes it a bit difficult to articulate this guy. These things can pop out, they can be removed. This one keeps popping out a bit, so I have to keep putting it back in. And then coming around the back, it's almost as detailed as the front, all the way around. Oh my God, look at all the painting, sort of dry brushing around the scissors and stuff. But be very careful because like I said, I've broken one already, absolutely gutted. And that was me just putting it together. That's not me being forceful with it, being difficult with it. I took my time, I took pace myself, but unfortunately, just getting some of those into the ball joints was just way too difficult. And that's what I will say about art figures. They make it a little bit too difficult for the collector. Why don't you guys just put these straps on when they're actually in the factory? Because if you did that, and there is a problem like the ends fray as you're trying to feed it through those loops, you could always get a new one and they will come out. We don't have any spares of these. So if we fray them or damage them while putting them on, it's game over for us, but for you, as, you know, even if it took an extra month to release, God forbid. Oh God, you know, a whole, whole nother month? God, you know, one six scale enthusiasts like us, we're used to 18 month wait times. So if you'd have just taken a couple more months just to get those little bits figured out and been able to try and get those scissors in properly without getting them damaged, that would have been a hell of a lot better. Okay, overall, what do I think of the figure? Well, aesthetically, he looks fantastic. Apart from that overly long neck and that sort of sunken in chest area, the rest of it looks absolutely fantastic. But the problem I've got is that looks can be deceiving, especially when you're using certain parts that are just a little bit too plastic fantastic and they can easily break. This guy is 100% a figure that you want to take a lot of time with and a lot of caution with because the buckles and the scissors are very fragile. Take care of them and be very, very careful when putting him together. If you are not confident with this kind of thing, this might not be the figure for you because it is fiddly and you are going to have to take your time. If you're one of those collectors that like something fresh out of the box and just plunk it on the shelf, no, you're going to have to earn your supper with this guy. But when you do take your time, you are rewarded with an absolutely stunning looking 1-6 scale Edward Scissorhands. Way better, and I'm shocked to say this, but there isn't a much competition, but it is actually better than the Hot Toys one. Simply because it has all the details that you would expect from a Hot Toy, but a way better head sculpt than the one we got back in the day from Howard Chan and the guys. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you do me a favor now. If you can get out of my cave, I'm going to go put this guy on the shelf next to the rest of my Johnny Depps to see exactly what they're like all together. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye bye.